Hi guys, welcome to today's video. I've got my grow lights set up, which is obviously like what the video is about, but that's why it's so like grainy and crap. It's just the light makes it look like we're filming in the 50s. Uh, today I had one of those days, you know when the day kind of gets away from you, I, I can't even remember what set it off. I just decided on a whim to like, because I hadn't planned to set up my grow light until I moved, but I have no idea when I'll be moving and I'd rather get it set up now. Plus also if I've got everything set up like I wanted it, it's one less thing to, to think about when I'm unpacking. So that's what I did. But then somehow I ended up, re I think I've repotted like nearly every single plant I own today. I've even repotted my ZZ plant, the one that was in the bathroom. I separated it and I thought, I thought it was dying. It's like I repotted my Monstera, which I also thought was dying. And the roots are fine, it's just the leaves. So I've repotted them all. I've like chopped a few roots off, put them into smaller receptacles, taken them out of terracotta. I don't think I've got any plants in terracotta now that aren't like meant to be in terracotta. Like that it would be detrimental if they weren't. So like my ponytail palm and a few succulents I've got in terracotta. But like I took my Adansonii eye out. My Adansonii eye is looking really good. And my string of hearts, which has it's not thrived in thrived throve thrived in a really long time so i've got that set up in the window so yeah uh, i actually i don't know if i ever did a video on how crap my self-watering plant pots are but i always just use them as cash pots but i have actually just potted them up like properly because i was like Do you know what yeah they don't work as self-watering pots but they will work fine as a regular pot so yeah I, it's three o'clock. I had a million things to do today and all I've done is repot my plants and made a massive mess. But yeah, so I've got my grow lights set up and I will show you now. Right, this is a very DIY option. These grow lights are for professional use and you're meant to, so they've got like little hooks to suspend them and you're meant to put them in like greenhouses or hang them from the ceiling or something. Oh, I repotted my piece lily today. She is going to be absolutely livid later. She was just in, a, in that, the pot she's in now, but she was in a cash pot and I've just like, cash pot, cash bow. I just put her like in it. So fingers crossed she doesn't die. But anyway, yeah, so this is an old Ikea unit. I don't know if they still make them. It's like a bathroom one. It was really cheap. I can't imagine it would be more than like 30 quid. And I just removed the middle shelf and attached the hooks through some of like the metal work at the top. Obviously this is very coupled together, but I didn't want to make any holes in any walls or anything. This is just like a, you know, very mobile, what's it called? Like it's, I can change it up whenever I want and move it around and stuff. So I finally got around to, see the stuff I've done today. This is the Syngonium Ice Frost that, um, had a really, really long stem with no leaves on it. So I finally chopped it off. I've got it in lacquer in a ridiculous setup. I mean, it does not need all this water. Um, and then I'll show you the top. No, the bottom is over here. And the stem, so the stem's still got roots and stuff, but it's fine. And it's actually got a little growth point there. And then these are just uh, like stems. Hopefully they'll be fine. This is my first autumn. Seems to be just doing really, really well. Finally repotted my ponytail palm. She's in a much bigger pot. String of hearts, looking terrible, but I'm hoping, you know, she'll be okay. And these rubber plants are just in the terrible self-watering pots. And I hope they don't die. Right, so anyway, back over here. Oh, just one quick little aside. This, Philodendron Narrow, so it was potted. Basically, only the leaf was sticking out. I, I bought it like that. It had a few more leaves then. It has so many growth points that were growing under the soil. It is mad. I think it was like on its side. Because it must have been. Because this one was out of the soil, but this one was under it. It's just, and then there's another one like here. It's, it's mad, it's mad. Um, so I'm hoping that will actually start to grow. 
since it's not done that yet right anyway we're back we're back so yeah this is just as i say an ikea bathroom cabinet with the light clipped on and then it's plugged into an extension cable up there and then i've just got my plants like underneath it i've got a little snake plant prop there because i think it'll grow quicker uh, i've got my hoya and then just down the side because there's a lot of light i've got my begonia my tortum at the end which is not doing well uh my philodendron no what are you allocated dragon scale um it lost all its leaves in winter like that's perfectly normal for alocasia but as you can see uh we've got loads of little none of which you can see at the moment i think i've buried them all oh there's one there uh excuse you um i repotted this one so i have buried a few things so um the growth points will hopefully be re-emerging i've not actually up-potted it i think i've just i can't remember now but i think i have just you know moved it around a bit that's a who are you philodendron golden dragon cutting that's been in there for yonks uh oh, this poor pilea pepperamoides it's just always having it oh it's always growing it's always growing and we've got a pup there we've got a tiny little baby one starting there it's always growing it just never seems to like thrive so yeah hopefully under the grow lights it'll do a lot better i'm just interested in getting more pink on the pink princess and then i've got my variegated alocasia and hoya keri eye over there these ones i'm just interested to see if they do better under grow lights this Atonsonia is the one that I cut back to nothing and it's growing really well. I've got a moss pole in there, like a coir pole. I have actually found a way to... I am not big on coir poles. They have too much of a ball ache. They don't stay moist. I actually sprayed this by... I got a spray bottle, turned it on to like the harshest... So it's like a, a jet of water and then just sprayed it directly into it. So it got the moss pole damp, but it didn't spray water everywhere. So I was quite pleased with that. But this new leaf, I'm quite impressed with the holes here. The, you can see like the older ones don't have so many. But I'm hoping that we can get a lot of fast growth. I've taken it out of terracotta. <laughs> taken it out of terracotta. So um, the, it should stay more moist. We should, I mean, it will. I don't know if that'll do it any good, but yeah. Got my Philodendron Hope here. She was also in Terracotta. Took her out because she hated it. She didn't die because Terracotta, um, Pepperoni Mia Hope are really, really good for not dying. But yeah. This is my Rufidophora Tetrasperma, which has been struggling for a really long time. I think it's light. I think that's the issue. I just, I don't really have a good spot for it. Um... But we've got a growth point there and a growth point there. I've actually, like, it's, this is a loop now because I've planted, I basically, like, buried a few nodes under there just to, just to see. I don't know what's happening here, but it looks absolutely terrible. For ages, I didn't know what to do with this pot because it's really shallow. And you don't get wide, deep plant pots, like nursery pots. And then I actually had the brainwave today. This is one of those things where I think I'm a genius, but I strongly suspect that everybody else has been doing this the whole time, but I just cut the top of the nursery pot off. So I got like a really wide, tall one and just made it shorter. So yeah, uh, just talking about that Rufidophora. I have a Rufidophora in my terrarium that is genuinely terrifying it's terrifying it is i need to take it out of there it's too big but i'll show you she's burnt to a crisp because she's too big like she keeps growing under the light but look at that aerial root that is just it's like a clump there's another one like trying to get into the frame but like, what is that? Well, I hope you enjoyed that very sort of quick and dirty grow light setup. I couldn't find anybody that had grow lights that I thought that looks really aesthetically pleasing. So if anybody knows of any, they always look like fine, but not, 
it very much looks like a plant room as opposed to I want it to look really pretty and I really don't think I can achieve that but you know the kind of person who feels comfortable leaving grow lights all day one thing I have noticed I don't know if this is true of all grow lights but these ones seem to be quite like the room is noticeably warmer which is a I mean it's a good thing because if you increase the heat and the light um you tend to get more growth the third factor in this trinity is humidity and i'm hoping that by having these are all just, they've all just been watered plus i've got like a couple in lecker and a prop in water that should create a decent amount of humidity i mean it's already a fairly humid room so i mean it's like the ambient humidity is about 60 so it's fine it's not dry i mean it's not phenomenal but it's not dry so I'm hoping that everybody starts doing really, really well. Uh, I don't know how much they, they'll they set us back in terms of like running costs, but I'm not going to run these grow lights. So this is actually quite a bright wall. It doesn't look bright. One, because the sun's gone in. And two, this is a really bright room. But as soon as you put a grow light on, it, everything seems really dark. Like I was rearranging my plants and I was like, I can't put anything in that top corner. Forgetting that's actually the brightest corner. <laughs> um, it's just, you know, it pales in comparison to that. This is this is a dark corner because like my desk's here. This is like a little window light, can't get it. But I probably will turn the light off. I will turn the light off when I'm out. I just can't leave it running. I, just, the, I don't like leaving stuff on when I'm not in anything. I'm like I'm the kind of person that goes on like unplugging the toaster and stuff. So I will probably run it, get it on when I get back from work about six. Um, I'll leave it on for a few hours today. But I, what, what I'm saying is, if you think running grow lights for hours at a time will impact you, you know, your bills or whatever too much, if you only want to run them for a few hours, that's better than not running them at all. And yeah, plants grow best if they have, I think it's 15 hours a day. Should we say? I'm sure it's that. Um, they didn't need a period of dark. Um, otherwise I, I think they just wear themselves out um, but basically I'm only going to be running them for about four hours a day I have done this before like when I used to I used to run these constant not constantly but you know I used to use them basically whenever I was in the living room as like a lamp like a reading light uh, and my plants loved it but I didn't have them on for like 15 hours a day I had them on for maybe four maybe like two in the morning and four in an evening actually something like that um so just run them whenever you feel comfortable doing that it's actually quite amazing how quickly a small amount of extra light will have an impact on your plants uh thank you so much for watching this i know i went off on a few tangents but um I've, because i think because i've seen all my plants today like up close because i've been like repotting them i'm over excited i've also like put a few i had like a few golden pothos pothoses that i've put in one pot i actually split my zz plant uh, if you've ever separated a zz plant it is if you want to separate a plant and you're nervous about doing it for the first time highly recommend a zz plant they have the most incredible thick roots and when you pull them apart the roots are so thick they don't rip they just kind of come apart it's, it's really pleasing to do uh, i wish i could have got it all in one pot but my zz plant hasn't grown so I had a ZZ plant and a Monstera in big terracotta pots and they just hadn't grown and I thought they had root rot. I assumed it had root rot or something. But I, when I unpotted them, their roots were really, really healthy. Basically, I think they've been growing roots rather than growing leaves. So I've just down potted them a bit. I have, I didn't have like a nice medium pot. Uh, so I did have to do a bit of uh, root trimming to get them in smaller pots. Nice, fine. It's not the best, but your plant isn't going to be crying about you trimming its roots. Uh, it's not something I would like advise doing for any reason other than trying to get it into a smaller pot. But if you only have a small pot and the roots are too big, chop them off. It's fine. And I know a lot of people like are up in arms about that, but it's better than trying to cram it into too small of a pot. Uh, and on that slightly weird note, I'm going to go. Thank you for watching. Bye.